Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Brooke Soldwet, and I would like to introduce Jared Schumacher, running for Alderperson from District 3. As we begin, I'd like you to give an opening statement as to your educational, vocational, and civic experience you have, which qualifies you for this office, and why you are running for Alder. So I'm um, originally from Racine. Um, I moved to Madison back in 2000. Um, I had an opportunity to uh, further my business uh, pursuits uh, a number of years ago, which I did. That company ended up going out of business, so that's when I decided to move towards uh, education and I wanted to pursue a degree. So I began pursuing my political science degree and a number, uh, just a few years ago I came back to Wisconsin after being away for a while and that's when I attended UW-Whitewater and I just graduated this spring with my degree in political science with a minor in international relations with a focus on climate change. Um, I volunteered for a number of uh, political organizations uh, out in California when I was living there and then back here in Wisconsin. Uh, why I'm running for city council here in Madison is just in talking to residents that I live, you know, my neighbors that I live around, um, they felt like they didn't always necessarily have a voice with their city government, so that was one thing that I felt. And, and I noticed it on a national level and, and a state level at times too, so that's one thing that, that I would really hope to change. Um, I want to be available to, to my constituents at all times, so. Thank you. Lack of affordable housing and the pressure it brings to the issue of homelessness is a chronic problem that Madison cannot seem to get ahead of. What new ideas can you advance to help address this issue? Well, um, myself, I have rented for a number of years. And when I first originally moved to Madison, uh, you know, back in 2000, I can tell you that the price that I was paying for an apartment then, it's about 50% more for less space than what I had in the same complex. Um, affordable housing, and we're not specifically talking about low income, we're not talking about high income, we're just talking about average Madison residents that are able to afford, uh, you know, either whether it be a home that they can own themselves or an apartment uh, to live in, I think is obviously, as you stated, been a, a struggle. Um, in my district alone, I, can, I know that in, on the outside of the interstate, we have a lot of really nice apartments out there, but you're looking at $1,000 at a minimum for rent. Um, I think that one thing that we really need to do is, is work with developers to get them to widen their portfolio, because a lot of the buildings that you see going up in the city are high-end apartments, you know, expensive to the point where if you're making fifty, sixty thousand dollars as either a single person or you know eighty thousand as as a couple, it can be a struggle. So I, I want to work with developers to get them to widen their portfolios to build just regular, average apartment buildings in the city. Um, I know that they've uh, tried to offer tax credits, you know, putting money out there, at the, you know, for to for developers to do that hasn't necessarily worked the best. So. If, that's, if they're not willing to use those options, then I would obviously look outside the city to other developers that are willing to come into Madison and work, out with, work with the city to build more affordable housing for residents. There has been discussion of the policies and procedures of the Madison Police Department. What's your perspective on whether any changes are needed in ways Madison police operate in our community? I can speak for them. Uh, my personal experience living in the in on the east side in District Three. Um, obviously, we I have I drive past the East District Station all the time, right there on Cottage Grove Road. So I see police coming and going in and out of there, um, driving up and down Cottage Grove Road. Don't necessarily always see them driving into the neighborhoods in those areas. I live on the other side of the interstate in the Grandview Commons area, and I can tell you that I don't really see them patrolling those areas either as much. Um, I've reached out to the police to find out solutions that we can do uh, with our local neighborhood officers. But I would, one thing I would like to see is increased patrols. Just driving around the neighborhood, not only that, but also more community policing. Uh, one pledge that I have made to constituents in my area is that uh, we have the North Star Farmers Market that is right across the street from Metro Market every Wednesday during the summer. I said that I will be there for residents to reach out to me. Maybe once a month have our local neighborhood officers just come out there for two to three hours and just talk to people in the community. At North Star Park, they have Ultimate Frisbee. Have them just stop by and, and become friends with people in the community. So people are, you know, have the trust with the police officers. They know who they are. I know growing up in my hometown, 
there were several officers that I knew by name. So I think that that is something that we could really strive to help build trust between the police and the community. And then also the other uh, step that I would say is um, seeing police maybe stop by a business or two every now and again. I know that crime is a little bit of an issue um, right on the Cottage Grove Road area, right by um, the old abandoned Sentry Building. There's a subway that's been robbed four times in the past year. So maybe seeing them stop into you know businesses from time to time, talking to managers and getting solutions that they may offer too. Working with, in conjunction, community and police together. Many residents perceive Madison to be a divided city, one in which people of color are less likely to thrive than whites. Do you share this perception? And if so, what might you propose to address the division? Well, I can tell you specifically as a white person that I can't understand 100% what somebody of color is going through. And, and I shouldn't assume that I know what their life experiences are like. Um, but I also can't ignore the fact that they're saying that people of color are saying that issues are having that they're having in the city are there so we have to address them um, a lot of people have mentioned implicit bias training which obviously is very important um, it for the police but at the same time I think more city employees also need to have that um, over the past couple months I know that I've seen in the news there's been teachers in some of the Madison schools that have also used racial slurs whether it's in a teaching environment or anything like that, I mean, you're, you're impacting young minds right from the beginning. So implicit bias training for the police as well. The other part of it is economic. You see areas of the city where you have concentrations of uh, uh, people of color. The infrastructure isn't always necessarily there either. Fixing those areas, transit issues. So a lot of those things, all, they all come together. What do you believe is the specific issue of most concern to the residents of your district? And how do you want to work on solving it? I think it's a two-part um, attack. Uh, infrastructure and development, and then public safety. Again, talking to residents in the area, um, online and in person, public safety is something that they've stressed. Um, in my neighborhood, we have had some thefts. Uh, whether it be from cars, homes, people walking up to doors in the middle of the night, it actually happened to a neighbor of mine where they saw footsteps in the snow uh, leading up to their deck. Um, the infrastructure and development part of it is District 3 is very heavy on residential, not so much on commercial and, re and retail. Take, for example, the Century Building that I mentioned. Closed down in 2014, has, has just been sitting there abandoned and boarded up for five years. It's a blight on the community. So there are uh, uh, a building that is possibly going to be going in there sometime in the next two years or so, but that's still up in the air. But when you see a boarded up building, I mean, it's going to bring down property values. It's going to bring an unstable element into the area. So I think that that is one thing that we need to remedy. The other part of the development is along Sprecher Road. You have a lot of homes on the other side of Sprecher Road. But there's a, then there's also a lot of open areas that are, you know, football field long of just weeds where it's prime target for some sort of retail development that could come in there and help lift up the community. As the district grows more to the east, you're going to see more people living out there and then they're going to have to drive all the way down to Stoughton Road if they want to have access to any type of retail establishments, dinner establishments, anything like that. So I think those areas out there obviously need more development as well too. Um, the public safety aspect of it, I think, goes along with your question about um, with the police, is I would like to see uh, more police patrols in those areas, just driving around. Sometimes, you know, if, if out on foot, like I said, to businesses, if more officers are needed for that, then that is something that I will obviously advocate for. I've heard in the past Chief Koval mentioned that he wants more officers, and the City Council has not always, um, they haven't, haven't always agreed together between the two of them. So. That is something that I would like to look, for, uh, look forward to working with the local neighborhood officers. Um, and I have also pledged that I want to set up roundtable meetings on a monthly or bi-monthly basis. Um, and meeting with the local neighborhood officers would obviously be part of that as well, too, to see where we have opportunities and where they have concerns, things that we can work with the community together to help cure the problem that we have. Which uh, city council committees do you believe you should serve on and why? The one that I was, um, before I decided to run, I actually was going to apply just to, to be on a city committee because uh, I wanted to be involved in, in 
bettering Madison. So the sustainability committee is, is one that I was always uh, looking at applying to, and it is one that I still will as the alder for District 3, uh, because climate change is one of the biggest issues that we have uh, facing the planet today. Um, and it's something that we need to tackle now. I think some of the steps the city council has made are in the right direction, but we need to go further. Obviously, we've seen what happened uh, this past August cost the city tens of millions of dollars. So that is one thing that I want to advocate for being on that sustainability committee. Um, the planning commission, because I want to have a part of the vision of where we go from here, not one, two years down the line, five, 10, 20 years down the line for my children, my grandchildren to see where that city is going to be for them. Thank you. What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete the interview? Transparency is going to be something that I'm going to heavy, uh, heavily focus on as Alder. Um, I have, obviously, as in my campaign, I have my email address out there so anybody can reach out to me, which I have had some residents reach out to me already. I've put my phone number out there so people can call me anytime that they want. Um, typically, we'll get back to them within 24 or so hours if, if I'm at work or whatever have you. Um, but then, obviously, like I said, um, as far as I'll be at every single uh, neighborhood farmer's market for over in North Star area so residents can come out there, talk to me, voice their concerns, whatever it may be. Um, and then also uh, having, like I said, meetings with local constituents in the area on a, on a monthly basis. And the, the part of that that I would also, also like to emphasize is I don't want to just have the same people coming to every single meeting. So maybe one month we'll do the uh, North Star Neighborhood Association. Maybe another month we'll do Rolling Meadows. Another month we'll do Heritage Heights. So hearing different views from everybody, but being available to my residents anytime that they need help or any type of concerns or, or opportunities that they see in the area to help make our district move forward. Thank you very much. We've been speaking with Jared Schumacher, and I'd like to also thank the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. As with every election, please vote. On behalf of Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, I thank you for joining us. Yeah.